Fermilab is home to one of the largest particle accelerators in the world. A four and a half mile long underground ring where subatomic particles are accelerated to nearly the speed of light and then smashed into each other. To accomplish this feat requires the help of our next great discovery, the superconductor. Who discovered superconductivity? Why was it such a big deal? Well, it was way back before the First World War, I think 1909, something like that. A Dutch physicist called Heke Kameling Onnes was the first guy to figure out how to turn helium from a gas into a liquid. And once he'd figured out how to do that, he could use liquid helium as a refrigerator fluid to make other materials very cold. And he wanted to study the properties of materials at very low temperatures. And one of the things that people were interested in at that time is how does the electrical resistance of a metal, for example, depend on temperature? Does it rise? Maybe it, it gets very resistive at low temperatures. That was one idea. So Onis took a sample of mercury, which he could make very pure, and he put it in an apparatus kind of like this one. He just dipped it in liquid helium in a refrigerator vessel and measured its electrical resistance as he lowered the temperature. And what he found was that as you lowered the temperature, the resistance went, went down fairly smoothly. And then suddenly, when he got to 4.2 degrees above absolute zero, the resistance dropped to nothing, absolutely to zero. This mercury would conduct electricity with no resistance, without losing any energy, without dissipating the current at all. And that was what he called superconductivity. So to see some superconductors at work, Bill, we're going down into this tunnel about 30 feet below the prairie in Illinois. And this is the Fermilab accelerator tunnel. In this tunnel, we have uh, a large ring of superconducting magnets, which we use to accelerate and contain protons and antiprotons that we're using to study the properties of matter. It's a big tunnel, four miles long, so we've arranged a little transportation for you. Oh, it's lovely. Beautiful, isn't it? It is. So we're using superconductors here. Superconductors allow an electric current to flow without losing any energy. And we can use them to generate a strong magnetic field, and that's what we're doing here. These are magnets, so we use the magnets to keep the protons and antiprotons circulating in the Tevatron, going round and round this big ring. They travel at close to the speed of light. It's 186,000 miles per second faster than we're going. Kind of <laughs> exhilarating to do that speed in this car. I would um, feel massive. Though. That's right. The particle accelerator at Fermilab requires enormous power. It costs more than a million dollars worth of electricity every month to refrigerate the lab superconductors to minus 455 degrees Fahrenheit, the point where electricity flows with zero resistance. The technical challenge now is to find superconductors that work at much higher temperatures at a much lower cost. Starting back in the 1980s, a couple of researchers at IBM in Switzerland found a class of materials that uh, superconduct is about 100 degrees warmer in temperature than this kind of device. Now, 100 degrees above absolute zero is still not the kind of temperatures that you have in your refrigerator. Of course, the holy grail is to find a material that's a superconductor at room temperature, because that kind of thing, if it could be made into useful electrical conductors, would really revolutionize the world. All of the things in your house that use electric current or that use electric motors would be changed and made much more efficient by that. <laughs> 